So it should be no surprise that we find our greatest fulfillment, our greatest joy in fulfilling the purpose for which God made us, for which Christ saves us, and for which the Holy Spirit sustains us. A congregation that is reluctant to serve others in the name of Christ will find its way into conflict without exception. Missional service is the only real antidote to congregational conflict. The God of peace is with us when we seek the highest possible values as followers of Jesus Christ. Now that we have the ends of that mission-focused value system, let's fill in the other levels. Take a look at this diagram. The pattern will look very familiar by now. And let me say a word about the numbering system. The lowest two values receive negative numbers. When we use personal preference and or factional survival as the values to guide congregational choices and decision making, nothing positive is added to the life and mission of the gospel. Relying on these lowest value levels exclusively to make our congregational decisions can only damage the mission of the church in the world. Now our spiritual heritage, our tradition, our call to missional service, these are the proper values to guide congregational choices and decision making, and when that happens, the outcome will be positive in the life of the church and the mission of the gospel. To illustrate this point, let's coordinate the levels of conflict described in the previous session with our mission-focused value system. There is a, a direct relationship between our operative values as individuals in a congregation and the type of conflict we're experiencing. If we can focus our value system properly with the mind of Christ, then we will reduce the level of our conflict. The God of peace is with us when we seek the highest possible values as followers of Jesus Christ. Conversely, the level of conflict we experience will be an accurate diagnosis of the real values that are driving our choices, decisions, and priorities as individuals and as a congregation. Now, let's try this out. If we discipline ourselves to focus on missional service in the name of Christ, then we will deal with obstacles that get in the way of that service. We'll focus on solving problems that hinder our abilities to serve. Preferences and personalities will be far less important than the needs of those we serve. If we begin to focus less on the mission, and more on keeping things the way they've always been, then we'll tend to have disagreements that begin to divide us. Even though our heritage as a congregation is very important to our identity, that heritage should be a resource for future mission. If our heritage and identity become anchors that keep us in the past, then the mission will suffer we will quickly move into a higher level of conflict. If we seek only to maintain our organizational identity, if we focus on congregational survival and reveling in our stuckness, then we'll live in the world of win-lose dynamics. We'll begin to talk about my church rather than Christ's mission. 
When this happens, we're teetering on the brink of a major conflict in our congregation. The mission of Christ through our church will be submerged in the battle of keeping score. If we focus on the survival of our own in-group, we will be caught in a perpetual fight-or-flight cycle. Nothing good can come from this sort of behavior. We'll have no energy or vision for mission. We'll have no willingness to take risks worthy of the gospel. We'll be so afraid of dying as a group that we might completely lose sight of the cross. If we live only our personal preferences, then we will seek to destroy one another as threats and enemies. We've discussed personal preference and found it wanting as a way to make choices about how to be and act like the Church of Jesus Christ. Now we can look at the other value levels. The next lowest level is that of factional survival. If we focus on the survival of our own in-group, we will be stuck in fight or flight. Factions have arisen in that little church at Philippi. Notice, notice that Paul describes this in chapter 1, starting with verse 15. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry. The message may still be Christ, at least on the surface. But the motives are jealousy and spite, selfishness and strife. Paul is even clearer about this in verse 18 of chapter 1. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. Sometimes people will be surprised that seemingly Christian folk can produce such pain and distress, but there in that church at Philippi, we can see the same thing happening.